Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is a quick start tutorial to get you in the air as soon as possible in the INI Builds A350. If you're looking for an in-depth deep dive, this is not it. So let's get started. And here we are in the flight deck of the beautiful A350. So to get this baby powered up, we're gonna go to the top and choose our battery one, bat emer one, bat emer two, and bat two. Then we'll go and do external power one, external power two. Nice. And you'll hear all the clicking and clacking of the batteries powering on. Very satisfying. We'll go to the top left now and get our adheres aligned. So set that to the up position, nav. IR1, IR2, and IR3 all set to nav. We'll then slide down here on the left side and we'll hit the ground controller to on, crew supply to on, and then we'll continue down and we'll get some of the lights turned on. So nav lights set on, logo lights on auto. We'll also go down here to our passenger signs, get our seatbelt signs to auto, no smoking signs auto, and no mobile signs on auto, and our emergency exit lights to armed there we go we're gonna save the fuel pumps and the apu to later but next up we're actually gonna jump to our efb right now it says ois not available and that is because it's currently uh waiting to boot up it's actually sitting inside this little black box it's basically a laptop that has to power itself on so there it is um it's now on so what we need to do is first click on flight ops systems there we go and we'll go to sim brief import now if you need help with getting your sim brief integrated and your navigraph integrated into the EFB, I have a tutorial uh, with how to set that up. But to keep this video quick, we're going to go right on by. So next, on the bottom menu, everything is already in order for you. We're going to click on ground right here on the bottom. And this is our GSX menu. If you have GSX, if you don't have GSX, you can just use the uh, normal ground equipment menu. So I have my chocks on, GPU on, air, air conditioning unit. I'm going to turn that on. And this is our GSX menu. We're we'll going to activate those services and click on request boarding. boarding. There it is. Boarding has been requested by GSX. Love the way they integrated that. And we'll keep on moving. Next on the list, load sheet. Click on the load sheet. And here we'll click on sim brief import once again. That's going to import our zero fuel weight and, and the fuel information. But if you want to actually load the aircraft, you need to then click on set zero fuel weight and set fuel is a very important step or your aircraft will actually not get uh, loaded. So once we've done that, that is all we need to do for the EFB setup. We'll come back to the OFP and take off performance later. So next up, we're going to dive down into our FMS. This is where the meat is. So what we need to do is down here on the keyboard, click on in it. After we click on in it, it now goes to the initialization page and I'm going to import my flight plan again from SimBrief, but you could type all this in manually, manually yourself, but we're going to go ahead and import. So click on company flight plan request with the cursor. That's going to say request pending. It'll take a couple seconds for that to load in. I have a fairly long flight plan today between Doha and Beirut. Once that's done, we click on received company flight plan. That's going to give us a drop down and we'll click on insert. There it is. Now let's insert our flight plan. Beautiful. We have our flight number from to our company routes, cruise altitude, uh, mode, cruise temp, cost index, trip winds, and all of that good stuff. If you want to import your company winds, you can do that right here, but it is not necessary. I'm only going to show you guys what's necessary to do this flight. Uh, nothing extra. This is not a deep dive. So we do not need to go to IRS. That's already aligning on its own, but we, but we will click on departure. Once we click on departure, again, make sure you have your flight plan handy. You can go ahead and put in your departure runway. We'll click on runway. And for my flight today, my departure runway is going to be 16 left here in Doha. We'll click on 16 left with our cursor. There we go. And for our SID, our SID is going to be the Tulum 1 mic. We'll click on that with our cursor. And it is going to be no transition. Now, you heard GSX just asked us, hey, do you want to board crew? I'm going to go back over here to ground. And I'm going to say, yes, go ahead and Pilots load the crew as well. And back to take our performance. There we go. So everything is done right through that menu. So I am now going to go to temporary flight plan. Click on that. And that's going to put everything into our temporary flight plan. And I'm going to go ahead and right now click on our destination of OLBA. That is Beirut. We'll click on that. That'll bring us to our arrival section of our route today. So, so for our arrival, the runway we're expecting at this moment is runway three. We'll click on runway and hit three. Next, approach. 
I'm expecting the ILS, actually sorry, it's the localizer uh, runway three. So we'll click on that. And then the via is actually, I believe it's none. There is no go via. So we'll hit none for that. And then our star, as we land into Beirut, it's gonna be the Cucklin to November. And there it is. If you if you can't get down, uh, you should be able to use a scroll bar. If a scroll bar doesn't work, you can also use the arrow keys down here on the keyboard to go up and down the stars. So we'll do Cucklin one, or sorry, two November, and we'll hit enter. We can hit enter down here, or we can click on it, either way. For the transition though, uh, there actually is no transition. It's just cupola. So that's good to go. We can now go to temporary flight plan right here. Click on that. That's gonna insert it in there. I know we didn't really double check it. We can zoom and kind of scroll through it as we please, but I, I trust that we did a good job. We'll hit insert temporary. That should now turn green, and now this is your active flight plan. Now it's important, especially with a long-haul aircraft like this, you want to make sure your flight plan is actually correct. So I'm going to show you how to do that just very quickly. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, and we'll put our, uh, our ND into plan mode, like so. And right now, yeah, the IRS is just finishing up aligning, so we might not be able to see too well. We'll zoom it out just a little bit. There we go. And then we can basically hit these double arrows here up and down to scroll up and down page by page our flight plan now if you want to be a bit more precise and you want to see it waypoint by waypoint you can actually use your crew has boarded. this Hello. little Passengers wheel right started. here and use your scroll wheel to zoom that up and up up and down and as i do that you'll see that is cycling through my flight plan by every single waypoint not by page i personally prefer to do it that way so Looks pretty good, don't have any discontinuities from what I can see. All right, just double check my flight plan and surprisingly, we do not have any discontinuities. So we're good to go. We'll click back on initialization here and then we'll go down. We do not need to worry about nav aids on this flight. So we'll skip down to fuel and low. We'll click on that. And that'll bring us to our active fuel and low page. So if you put your zero fuel weight in the EFB bag here in the load sheet, then you're good to go. All you need to do is click on the box here for zero fuel weight and then go down here to your keyboard hit enter this way. that'll auto fill that jump to the next one cg hit enter again there we go and then block fuel enter again and then for our passenger number we do have to put that one in manually so we'll click on two six four on the keyboard and enter and when we're done with that we'll click on return and notice how all this stuff is right in order i love that next we're going to go to take off performance that's our final page we need to worry about. And in order to fill out this page, we're gonna go back to the EFB and go to take off performance. And all we need to do here is click on sync FMS. Since we've put all the information in the FMS already, we'll just take that information and put it here. And then we'll go to the left side and we'll hit sync again. That's gonna sync the current airport and wind data. You can actually change your runway if uh, you have a, a wet runway. And you can change here if you wanna swap between toga and uh, flex takeoff. And then the last step is just to click compute. After you see these numbers pop up, we have all of our V, v speeds, flap speeds, thrust reduction, and we'll hit send to FMS. And then we'll go back to our FMS and you'll see it's put in a lot of the information for us. So all we gotta do is click on confirm speeds. This way. There we go, our V speeds are all plugged in. Flaps, trim settings, packs, and everything. Hello. And while we're down here, we'll click here where it says FMS one and go to the drop down and find the serve tab. And here's where you can actually manipulate your transponder, which is the reason why we are here. All I'm gonna do is change my transponder to mode auto. That way it'll take care of it for us. All right, I'm also gonna jump over here to the second FMS and click on ATC com. And we're gonna go to DATIS. And this is gonna give us uh, the ability to basically download all the weather for our departure, arrival, and alternate airport. So I'm gonna click on update all. And it's going to populate all that. And then we'll click on the double arrows here to make that large. And we can see what our weather is. Now that we have our weather, we can see that the QNH is 1012. So I'm actually going to go ahead and plug that in here on our HPA. And I have mine synced so they both work together. And this is a good time if you're using ATC to go ahead and get your ATC clearance, which is what I'm going to do now. And to get your ATC clearance or talk to anybody, you're going to need the radio. So we'll go down here and go to VHF1 and make sure you turn the volume up because by default it is not up. So turn it up and then click on it. You'll see a light. Heading. 
You can now hear the ATIS talking and, and click on requested. call so that we can actually talk to ATC. I'm also going to set VHF2, on turn it on so I can hear, but I will not hit call because I don't want to talk to them. I just want to Cabin monitor that frequency. Airport. Now for uh, your cabin announcements and zero intercom, zero you can zero turn the volume up on that yeah, as okay. well. Intercom, cabin, zero. and PA, and we'll click down the buttons for all three of those so now we can actually hear the Density flight attendants when they're talking zero zero so and to change the frequency just click zero on two the zero button zero next zero to the frequency on the right Cab and type okay. in your frequency so for clearance two one two zero eight seven five and that's good Density there and we'll click on the dot zero to the left feet. that will swap that out and you're good to go Qatari one one six read back correct Ground will be on one two zero decimal two two five. Okay, after I got my ATC clearance, uh, they actually changed my runway, which I've already done. But I wanted to show you how to clear out a discontinuity, which I have now. So basically, once your cursor is on this screen, you can click on the discontinuity and just hit delete. There you go, Thomas and then insert uh, temporary flight plan, and that's it. And now that our FMS is completely programmed, we'll go ahead and set our MCP up. So we'll just set our altitude for 4,000. That is good. Let's go ahead and get our APU on by getting our fuel pumps on first. Left, right, center. And down here, we'll hit our APU master switch to on. You can then wait here until you see flap open. There it is, flap open. We can then go to hit start. Once the APU is up and shows a veil, we'll go back up to the top. You can see it says a veil there on the start switch. We'll hit APU bleed. And now we are just about ready for pushback. So we'll go ahead and get our beacon light to the on position. And we'll go back to our ground panel here. And again, I'll be using GSX, but you're going to use whatever pushback system you like. But go to GSX here and we'll say prepare for pushback and departure. That'll automatically shut the doors and remove the GPU for you. All right, release the parking brake, and we are pushing. And if you want to get the map view here on the ND, you can actually go to zoom here. It does take a few seconds for the airport map to load. But once it does, you can actually zoom in on the airport and have a better look at where you are on the airfield. So that green arrow there is actually our ex expected departure runway. And we can continue to maneuver that knob, twist that knob, and we can zoom in closer. And we've been approved to push back facing south, so that's exactly what the ground crew is doing. While we're pushing back though, we can go ahead and get the engine started up by going down here to the center console, put our ignition start into the start position, and then we'll start off, start off with engine number one by flipping the engine number one igniter up, and that is all. It's that easy. موجودة تحت مقعدكم أو بجانبه لارتدائها اسحبوها فوق الرأس اربطوا الحزام وشدوها يمكنكم نفخ السترة بسحب and when the number one engine is finished starting the same process for engine two just flip up the switch for engine two and that is it All right, you know the engine is good to go when you see a veil on engine two there. Once that is complete, we can move back down here and set our ignition start to normal. We'll then go to top side once again and we'll get the APU turned off by hitting the massive switch. There we go, and the APU bleed. Now that the APU is turned off, or at least turning off, we go over here to the side and we'll set our flaps for takeoff for us today, we do flaps one. There we go. We'll get our ground spoilers set to arm by clicking and pulling it out here at the top. There we go. And then lastly, we'll get our auto brakes. Click on that. There we go. And then we want to double check our pitch trim. Our pitch trim is right here underneath our main screen. So 27.8 and 27.8 is set on both sides. Now we can do our flight control check. So we got our joystick here and we'll check our center screen as I go full right left forward and back as well as checking our rudder pedals those are good to go as well flight controls free and correct once you've done all that you can go down here and click on takeoff 
config. And you should see take off config normal, all green, no blue. We are ready for taxi. So up to the top side, get our taxi lights on, and we'll get our taxi clearance. Doha Tower, Qatari 116 Heavy, holding short runway 34 left, ready to go. Alright, we're gonna hold it short here. Qatar 116 Heavy, Hamad Tower, runway 34 left, winds 105 at 7, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 34 left, Qatari 116 Heavy. Alright, so we're gonna get our strobe lights on. Our landing lights on. Also, nose lights. And that is all. We are ready for departure. I'm going to go ahead and grab my departure chart here. Just like that. It's going to be straight out for the most part. All right, 3 4 left identified. Put on our constraints. And airport and we'll zoom out our ND so we can see our actual flight plan that looks good and I like it in arc mode all right we're doing a flex takeoff so we're gonna push our throttle to the flex position hold the brakes release the brakes and just pull it up our set and flex 72 Airspeed's alive. V1. Rotate. Pause to right. You're up. Pitching up about 15 degrees. There it is. You can hand flower as long as you want. In my case, we're about a thousand feet above. I'm gonna go ahead and hit autopilot one. And now the aircraft's in control. One one six. Contact departure on one one nine of seven two five. Over to departure, uh, Qatar one six. All right, we'll bring our throttle back to climb. There we go. Now we have throttle detect Qatar climb. Qatar 116, departure is Dulu 1 Alpha. Initial climb 4000. Departure frequency. All right, over to departure. Departure, Qatar 116, climbing via sit. And it flaps up. Qatar 116 heavy, Doha departure, radar contact, climb flight level 200. Climb flight level 200, Qatari 116. Alright, that is set. And we're looking good. Climbing out of Doha. 